Good morning, Stitchy friends. I'm Kelsey from the Cross Stitch Farmhouse, and this is floss tube number seven. I'm excited to be back filming a video for you guys today. I know it has been a little while. Summer craziness has just been, it's in full effect right now. <laughs> so it's been a little hard to get a video in, but my kids are still sleeping. We've had a long week. I think they're really wore out. So I was like, I'm gonna get up, film this, and hopefully they won't even be out of bed before I can get this all put away. So fingers crossed for me. <laughs> um, what's been up? So I mentioned in my last video, I was headed to Texas to visit my bestie. So I went there for three days. I had a great time. Um, I got in some much needed bestie time. We went to a concert. Um, I'm wearing the t-shirt I got there but it was just, it was really great. We had so much fun. And then when I got home, we went into full baseball season mode. We had games and practices all throughout the week, um, but it was really fun. He had, it was two games a week um, on average, and it was so great to watch him. He improved so much from last year, and his confidence was just, up there and it, it was so much fun to watch um so then when that wrapped up we ever since then we've just been having kind of sticking at home summer um we've gone to the movies quite a bit i'm trying to get a lot of projects done around the house and just organizing cabinets and closets just stuff that i've been putting off um, been working on that and then we had a really fun beach day the other day my mom and i drove the kids down and they tried boogie boarding for the first time. Wyatt was a little pro. Um, he, we had to make him get out to eat lunch and he turned around and was right back in there. So he they both had so much fun. Um, we're still all a little sunburnt. <laughs> I'm a crispy little tomato right now, but it was a great day. Um, so before I get into all the stitchy goodness, I do want to do my giveaways from last time. These are just, I just wanted to do something for you guys. I appreciate so much, you know, the positivity and all the kind comments and just, you guys have been so welcoming and supportive and I just want to give some stitchy kindness and say thank you to you all for tuning in and watching me. Um, I've connected with a lot of you on here and even on Instagram just about cross stitch and life and family and it's just so great and I love being part of a community that is so welcoming and just so supportive and really just loves to hear about what everyone's doing. It's amazing. So um, I'm going to announce these right now and the winners, if you guys can just get a hold of me, I always put my email at the top of the show notes or um, you can get a hold of me on Instagram as well, whatever is easier for you and I will get these out ASAP. Um, our post office is open Monday through Friday so I can drop in any day and get these mailed out. Okay, so first chart is Homegrown by It's So Emma. This was the Stitch Quarterly from a couple years ago. So you're going to get the chart and the floss. And this goes to Red Poppy Crafts. So congratulations. And then this one is, I think it's Britter Clip Designs by Michelle M. Lash. Summer is in the air. And this one you're gonna get the fabric and it comes with the buttons. And this is going to Mary Ann Johnson. So congratulations to both of you. Like I said, get a hold of me. Our town is super tiny. It's no, no issue for me to drive over there and get these mailed out really quick. So just get me your address and I will get that done. Okay, so let's jump into stitching now. Previous finishes, I wanted to show you guys a B piece that I did last summer. Um, I'm getting out all my bee decor. I'm loving it. Something about all the greens and yellows together makes me so happy. Um, but this is by Pinker and Pumpkin Designs. She's on Instagram and she posts a ton of super, super cute freebie charts. And this is one of them. Buzz, buzz. I did this on 28 count tea coffee dyed Monaco. It was just a little scrap piece I had left. 
and I did not write down the colors. I think I probably used 310 for the black. This is probably just that blanc white. The yellow, I'm gonna say is probably 720 something. But really cute, I just wanted a little pillow that I could prop up next to other larger display pieces or in a tiered tray. I put a little lizard litter in the bottom to give it a little weight and it's perfect. And this is all fabric that I had left over from, it was like a homestead fabric collection. Um, I will look it up. If I can find it anywhere, I'll link it, but I'll at least put the name of the fabric collection because it worked out really perfect for the, for the B theme. Okay, and then I did have one FFO from last time I was on here. This is the Stitch Quarterly, I believe from 2019, and it's American Spirit. And here's my finish. So I use the called for fabric and floss. It all came in a kit, so I just used what it came with. And I believe it's Vintage Country Mocha is the fabric, if anyone was curious. Um, and then the ribbon is all from Hobby Lobby. You might get lucky and find it on clearance right now. I know they're bringing in all the fall stuff. And I just finished it on this, it's actually a candle holder that I had from, um, gold canyon candles it's just getting old and i've changed some of my stuff so i've instead of throwing it away i figured oh, i'll slap a cross stitch on it and it worked out pretty perfect okay i did have a couple of finishes i have been really good and i have not gone to hobby lobby or michael since summer break started um, i'm starting to have withdrawals <laughs> but um so I need to go so I can get some finishing pieces for these because I want them out now. <laughs> but I took the recommended piece um, on the plane that you all voted for. It's Creamery by Cherry Hill Stitchery on Etsy. She has some of the most adorable charts. But here is my finish. This is on that whitewash board by Fabric Flair. It's a 14 count Ada. And I will say I'm not normally an Ada person, but I really enjoyed this fabric. Um, I think especially for stitching while traveling, um, plain lighting is not always the best. So you never know what you're gonna get. But this, I could see it when I didn't have a whole lot of light, um, it, no issues. So if you're traveling and have a piece on this fabric, take it. I love this though. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna finish it on. I might save this until next spring because Spring Shop seems to get a ton of great farmhousey style frames and boards. Um, so I might put this away and finish it next year. Oh, and that reminds me, I had a few people ask, what do I take on the plane with me as far as stitching supplies? Um, a few of you told me, like honestly, horror stories about TSA making you throw away scissors and things like that. And I don't, I don't really have advice on that. I've never had that issue. I think that's probably an airport to airport type of thing. Um, I've been pretty lucky. I don't fly a whole lot either, I will say, but I've never had an issue. I usually take a little metal box with three to four needles, so I have backups. And then these are my favorite scissors. They are just from Michaels. They have a really short snipper. I don't know what you call it, um, <laughs> but they're short, so I've never had an issue on an airplane with these. This is another pair I really like to take. Um, again, super short, never had an issue. Uh, I do know that some people recommend taking nail clippers that will cut fabric or not fabric. I mean, you might be able to, but it will cut your floss. Um, and then I've on Etsy, I've seen these necklaces you can get or even I guess not, you wouldn't have to put it on a necklace, but um, like a charm, like a key fob type thing. And they're round 
and they have little notches. Um, some of them only have one, some of them have them kind of all over. And the notches have a little razor blade in it. So when you put your fabric in, it slices it. So maybe try something like that. It looks like a piece of jewelry and I've seen on airline things where they say that you are allowed to take that. So that would be my best advice if you're having bad luck with the scissors. Um, but I've never had that problem again. So that's the best advice I can give you. Okay, and then another finish I had was the Honey Bee Sampling by Country Cottage Needleworks. I finished this up last night actually. But here it is. And I know last video I had said I was probably gonna change the color of the flowers. I was thinking a periwinkle blue or maybe licorice red, but once I got it all stitched and I held the pink up to it, I kind of fell in love with it. And so I ended up using the called for pink it's kind of that dusty rose. It's not like a Barbie pink, so I didn't hate it. Um, so I just use that. But really liked this one. I'm excited to get it fully finished so I can get it up with my other bee stuff. I'm trying to do a huge bee display in my entryway. Um, and that was just a really fun one to do. I love stitching letters, so anything with letters is, it seems to go by quick. Okay, and then I think I took the chart out of my um, bag. So I have the September chart, but this is the new month to month series by Stitching with the Housewives. And I signed up for the Fat Quarter Shop Club, so they just send me a chart each month. Um, and this is my August chart. I'm using that 32 count gingham fabric I found on sale at Hobby Lobby. I dunked it in some coffee tea dye really quick, and I think this looks so perfect. And I've decided I'm gonna do all the charts on this fabric, so I know Fat Quarter Shop sells the same exact fabric in larger cuts, because I think this is probably just a, like a Fat Quarter piece. Um, so I'll see if I can get a really big piece from them, and that way I'll have it ready to go for all the other months. But here's the September chart. And I just know that red is gonna look gorgeous on that gingham. So if you haven't ordered, here's me encouraging you to order the series because it's adorable. Okay, so I have a couple other whips. Um, I worked on these all throughout and then this was a new start. It's the chicken chart I was also thinking about taking on the plane. So glad I didn't. It has way too many color changes. That just would not have been smart. <laughs> um, but I did start it when I got back. So I don't have a cover photo, but it was just called Chicken Chart and it's on Etsy. The shop is your favorite stitch. But here's what I have done so far. I just have the little gate up there and this is part of the rooster tail. It's on 28 count, is it smoky? Smoky white linen. I love how it just looks a little dirtied up. And I'm thinking I might get this done and put it in my laundry room or in my kitchen. Um, I love chickens. I don't have a backyard big enough to have them, so I stitch them. Okay, then another of my favorites, Fall on the Farm. I have really been enjoying this series. Fall has my heart. I love it. I love the colors. I love all the pumpkins everywhere. I love the colder weather, just everything. So this series is great. Um, I'm on chart seven, Pumpkin Patch. I just finished this a couple days ago. And this is by Little House Needleworks. Again, I joined the Fat Quarter Shop Club, so they just send me one a month. I am anxiously awaiting the next one. But here's what I have done. And I will try and give you a close up. I hope that's in frame. I'm trying to look through the fabric. <laughs> 
but seven out of nine, I'm almost finished and I know how I wanna finish it. I haven't found a board for it. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna ask my husband to make me a little fake picket fence that I can kind of uh, paint white and really distress it and get this mounted and then maybe have like some sunflowers or hang like a little sign from it. Just, I can see it in my head. I just need to have him help me make it come to life. So he's kind of in his busy season at work. So I know he's gonna be a little irritated that I'm gonna finish this when he's busy, but I know he'll find time for me <laughs> to throw that on his list. Okay, and then Santa's Village, everybody's loving this one. Um, I'm a little behind this month. I only have a couple days to get this chart finished up so that I stay on my one a month schedule. I'm really trying, um, but it's been fun so far and I'm not burnt out on it yet. So here's my progress So. And I think I'm, I didn't show the chart because I forgot it in my, I'm pretty sure I left it in my bedroom, but it's Country Cottage Needleworks. I'm on chart eight, which is Candy Cane Cottage. So all I've gotten done is this top and the start of a snowflake, but I'm planning on stitching on this all weekend. It is so, so beyond hot here. We have been in the hundreds for I think they just said on the news, we've been in the hundreds for over like 15 or 16 days. And that was a couple days ago. So I think it's finally gonna drop down into the high 90s next week, but we're dealing with like 102, 103 every day. And I'm over it. So I like to crank the AC down and stitch on this and watch Christmas movies. <laughs> but it's been so fun to work on. I'm planning on stitching all weekend, I'll get that chart finished up and then I'll probably jump right into the ninth chart. And I'm using all the called for, and it's just coffee tea dyed linen, even weave that I got on one, two, three stitch for that one. Okay, and then my last whip, I pulled out a couple days ago and I worked on it a little bit. Um, it's the stocking that my husband had picked out. I would love to stitch a stocking for each family member so that we can have them all hung up and looking cute together. Um, I let him pick his out first. He chose this one by Dimensions. It's Holiday Glow and it's a gold collection. But here is my progress on that. This is width to width, so that's how wide it'll be, and I just need to fill in the top down to the bottom. But I'm really loving this. The detail is just amazing. That's one thing about dimensions I really like. There's so much detail in this already, and then when you go back and add that back stitching, it just makes everything pop. And I save all my back stitching for the very last finish. Uh, I love it though. This is a really fun one. I'm not gonna have it done by this Christmas. There's no way with having Santa's Village fall on the farm and now the month to month that I'm trying to get one done a month. I, I just don't have time, it's not gonna happen. But I would like to get halfway done maybe by the end of the year and then I can do the other half next year. So if I could get a stocking done every other year, I'd be happy with that. I need to be more realistic with my, <laughs> with what I can actually get done. But there's that. And this one's hard too because the fabric, it's, you're using so many, you know, like bundles of floss on it. It calls for like sometimes up to four or five threads at a time. Um, so it, you have to really pull it through the fabric and I end up tearing my fingers up. So I need to, my husband has, um, I think it's called mole skin in his like first aid kit. So I need to borrow a little sheet of mole skin and cut some finger band-aids for myself because the needle on that one tears me up. Okay, and then I have 
a little bit of haul, not too much. Like I said, I've been really good. I have not gone Hobby Lobby, Michaels, anything. We've just been enjoying summer with the kids. So I really need to get in there and get some finishing supplies. But I did get a couple little gifts that I wanna show you. Um, my husband and I celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary in June. And so he surprised me. We're not big gift givers for our anniversary. We usually plan a trip together. Um, but this year he got me kind of a bigger gift. I was excited. Um, I've been wanting a new glue gun for a while. And before I had, I believe it was Gorilla Glue. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. Gorilla Glue brand. Um, but it was a mini. So it's just a really small orange glue gun. It used the mini glue sticks, which it was fine. I used it, I've had it for years. Um, but just with the amount of cross stitch I'm finishing, I was going through glue sticks like crazy. And I told him, you know, I think I need to get a full size and I would like to get a cordless uh, glue gun. And so he surprised me with this. It's Ryobi brand. Um, we're normally a Milwaukee tool family, but they're late to the game on their glue gun. So we're giving Ryobi a chance. And I will say so far, I love it. Um, it came with, he bought it in a kit because we didn't already have Ryobi tools. So you got the glue gun, you get the battery. Um, I don't know how to, so you get the battery. You get the charging dock that recharges this. And I think, man, I remember it was ridiculous. You get like 12 hours of battery or something. Like it was a lot more than, more than you need. Um, but you get that. It came with a bunch of glue sticks to start you off. And it comes with three different tips. So let's see. Hopefully you can see that it's this one's kind of an oval shape and then it came with a really small round tip and a little bit larger round tip um, so that's pretty cool and then look at it has a little a little drip tray that you can pull in and out I thought that was so cool but it has two heat settings so I am gonna warn you the hottest heat setting, like they're not playing. It was so hot when I went and put a line on my sticky board to um, when I was finishing a cross stitch, the sticky board, like the glue started smoking. It, that's how hot it was. So I was like, ooh, I'm a little worried. Um, pretty sure I gave myself second degree burn on two of my fingers. It was, <laughs> it was bad. Um, so I put it down to the lower of the two heat settings and it was perfect. It was just the right heat. I could push the fabric down on the glue and it didn't burn me, but it held really good. So I'm warning you, if, if you do get one of these, be careful. They are not playing when, when they say high, high heat. Um, but if you're in the market, I highly recommend this. So far, I love it. I have no complaints. I've used it quite a bit. I'm almost out of glue sticks, so I need to go get more, but definitely recommend if you're looking for one. Okay, and then my mom went to Hobby Lobby the other day and found a couple things that she brought back to me. First, these little, I have this big window right here and it's like glaring. But they're a little finger, I think they're silicone, but they're little finger slips so I don't burn myself with the glue gun. <laughs> so thank you, mom. <laughs> um, and then she found this little stand. You can either set it because it has a pretty wide base or it has a little kick on it. But how cute is that for a cross stitch? So I think I wanna try and put that month to month series on here. We'll see how it's gonna fit. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna work on this, but she did say they have a larger board. So I might have to go back and I'll have it in two sizes. <laughs> and then she also picked up these burlap leaves for me for fall decorating. So I thought those were really cute. Okay, that is all I have for you guys this video though. Um, thank you so much for joining in. 
I should, like I said, my kids are going back to school soon in August. I should be on a normal schedule again. I'll be able to get a video out about every three weeks. So um, if you want, subscribe to my channel. I would love it if you follow. Um, you can go follow me over on Instagram as well at the Cross Stitch Farmhouse. It's spelled exactly the same as it is on here. Um, and until next time, I hope you get in lots of stitching time and I'll see you later. All right, bye.